हेलो गाइस आज एक और एक्शनिटी में आपको खुश आमदीद कहते हैं अच्छा जी आज है क्लैक्सी फोर्ट चले देखते हैं इसका डैमेज कैसे कर सकते हैं लेट्स सी द सैमसंग गैलेक्सी फोल्ड थ्री हियर वी आर येट अगेन विद सैमसंग्स फ्लैगशिप फोल्डिंग फोन सैमसंग सेज देव अपग्रेडेड सेवरल थिंग्स लाइक द इंटरनल स्क्रीन ड्यूरेबिलिटी एंड समथिंग कॉल्ड आर्मर एल्यूमिनियम But even without opening the box, the biggest improvement I see is the packaging. Huge props to Samsung for ditching the plastic. Plastic packaging is usually not recyclable and takes about 450 years to decompose in a landfill, which is crazy. Your plastic bubble wrap or packing material will be around for the next 25 generations. Your 20th great-grandchild will still be able to find everything plastic that you've thrown away still chilling in the dirt, which is pretty gross. Sustainably sourced paper on the other hand can be recycled 6 times and decomposes in just 2 to 6 weeks and more trees get planted to make it huge win for everyone including the planet thumbs up to Samsung for making the switch let's get started This new Galaxy Fold 3 starts at $1800 pretty expensive for a phone but this phone is rather unique Inside the box we get a USB-C cable but no charging brick. But that's fine. Most people already have one and Anchor makes faster chargers and longer cables anyway. I'll leave a link for my channel sponsor Anchor down in the description. There are magnets inside of the Galaxy Fold 3. It's kind of towing my lighter across the table. But you didn't come here for the magnetic attraction. You're here for the Mose action. And it looks like again this year we might see some carnage. The warning list turning on the phone is still a mile long, including no touching the display with a fingernail, only using the specially built S Pen Fold Edition, and you know dust might cause damage, all while not removing any screen protectors. Samsung makes it seem like this Fold 3 needs to be handled with white gloves in a clean room, but we'll see how true all that is. The Fold 3 is very similar in appearance to the Fold 2 and Fold 1. with a small gap between the folded screens and a wedge shape when closed. I imagine the gap helps keep the screen from creasing too tight and to help keep the two screens from rubbing up against each other when it's closed. Let's start the scratch test. The Fold 3 has two screens. The exterior front facing screen does come with a removable screen protector. At least I hope this one comes off. The Mohs scale of hardness helps us differentiate between different materials like plastic which scratches at a level 2 or 3, glass which scratches at 5 or 6, and sapphire which scratches at a level 8 or 9. Samsung says they're using Gorilla Glass Victus on both the front and back of the Fold 3 and that matches up perfectly with our scratches at level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7. The same slab of Victus glass is up protecting the 10 megapixel front facing camera. It's as scratch resistant as the rest of the front screen. Opening the phone while the camera is on transitions us to the much larger screen in the center, along with the hidden underscreen camera up on the top right. We've seen underscreen cameras before with the Axon 20 and the Axon 30, and it looks like Samsung also has that super low resolution pixel grouping above the camera that we saw in the first generation Axon 20. They're about a year behind. The pixels turn off when the front-facing camera is activated, then the pixels turn back on when the front camera is off. And honestly, it's not that bad. The halo around my studio lights is minimal. The camera itself is only 4 megapixels, but since there are literally four other nicer cameras to choose from on this same device, it's really not that big of a deal. And pretty cool that Samsung is trying something new. I'm all for it. Samsung has said that with this Fold 3, their middle screen is 80% more durable than last year's, which would be pretty impressive. The Mohs scale of hardness isn't the best scale to use on different levels of plastic. No matter what plastic it is, it'll all fall between level 2 or 3. We would need something like a shore durometer to fine tune that scale and see if the hardness levels actually improve between generations. Cuz as of right now, we're still getting scratches at a level 2 with deeper grooves at a level 3. And once again, my fingernail is still able to leave very noticeable marks on the surface. The display underneath the plastic might be 80% more durable, but it's still very soft on the surface, which is just something to keep in mind. The more we know what to avoid, the longer the phone will last and stay in good shape during its lifespan. 
The front camera is also tucked underneath this soft plastic layer and could get scratched, all 4 megapixels of it. Samsung has created a special Fold Edition S Pen stylus for this Fold 3, with a special spring-loaded tip to help relieve the pressure on the surface of the screen. It's a pretty strong spring inside. Pressing the tip of the stylus onto the screen, it does leave a slight indention onto the plastic. I'm only pressing about 50% of the spring's capacity, it's not fully locked out. And even at 50%, this is probably pressing harder than most people will ever be drawing with the S Pen. Wiping off the display, it's pretty impossible to refine the marks I was making, so I would say that the S Pen is indeed safe to use on the screen. S Pen yes, fingernails no. Inside of the S Pen are some interesting things. We have the lower half of the pen with its removable and replaceable tip, along with the coil of copper wires that let the digitizers under the folding display sense where the S Pen is at even while it's hovering above the surface of the screen. The top half of the pin is where we find the spring, along with a pretty beefy magnet. Another thing Samsung talked about in their launch event was the Armor Aluminum. And I'm not sure what aspects of the aluminum are armored though, since it appears to scratch about the same as most other aluminum phones out there. The power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner, and the volume rocker is made for metal, the oval of plastic up here is probably for the 5G antenna, but we'll have to check that during the teardown. Folding the phone shut, we can scratch both top halves of the phone at the same time. We have a few microphones and a loudspeaker up here. We get some more aluminum on the hinge of the phone, along with some inlaid Samsung lettering, the same as last year. You can peel it out if you really want to, but it probably won't ever fall out on its own. Down at the bottom of the phone, we get our USB-C port, and the second stereo loudspeaker. And over here on the last of the six sides we haven't tested yet, we have the SIM card tray, which has room for one SIM card and no expandable memory. All of these things we've kind of come to expect from the Galaxy Fold series of phones. One thing I did not see coming this year though was water resistance. This guy is IPX8. The X means it's not dust proof, which is why I currently have a lot of dust in my hand. You might be asking, hey Jerry, how can a phone be water resistant, but not dust resistant? Well, rumor is that Samsung has coated the internal circuits with an oleophobic coating. The coating can repel water without having to be watertight. Pretty cool technology, since it would probably be pretty difficult to plug up all the gaps and holes on a folding phone, which has all those gears inside the spine. We'll have to check out the oleophobic coating during the teardown. With rocks, dirt, and dust spilling out of both ends, I think it's pretty safe to say that this is reasonably the most dirt a Fold could ever anticipate encountering in real life. We'll open and close it a few more times for good measure. Surprisingly though, the hinge is still as silent as the day it was made. No rocks, dust, or dirt is captured inside. Not sure if Samsung is still doing that internal bristle thing or not, just another thing we'll have to check during the teardown. But so far, the dust resistance is pretty impressive. I wouldn't take it to the beach or the job site, of course, but it's nice to know that it's not going to fall apart with the first speck of dust it encounters. The back glass is textured Gorilla Glass Victus, and for the rear camera units, we have a 12 megapixel telephoto, 12 megapixel main sensor, and 12 megapixel ultra wide. Easy to remember when they're all the same and all protected by glass. Making our way around to the front screen, we see it's a 6.2 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X with a 120 hertz refresh rate. After about 14 seconds, the screen does go black and the pixels kind of glow a dark red. Interesting. Let's see if the same thing happens on the middle screen. The middle screen is the same dynamic AMOLED but includes some folding action. This guy is a square 7.6 inches and has the same 120 hertz refresh rate. Oddly enough though, it lasts about twice as long on the burn test with even less damage. The pixels only stayed a burned white color like we normally see on AMOLED displays, and even the plastic surface didn't suffer much damage, even after 30 seconds of fire. Not, you know, super relevant to everyday use, but still interesting. The fingerprint scanner is over here on the side of the phone. It's a capacitive sensor built right into the power button, which is where personally I think they should all be. Not a huge fan of the underscreen fingerprint scanners myself. And after setting my thumbprint, then adding some hardcore scratches to the side of the scanner, we can test it. 
with everything appearing to work just like normal. Not too shabby. Finally, the bin test. The first Galaxy Fold did not survive my durability test, but not because it physically snapped in half. The screen got poked and then it died. The second Galaxy Fold did survive all this abuse, and now it's time for the Galaxy Fold 3. It still has a very quiet hinge, and when bent folded shut, there is no budge from the front to the back. No surprise, we would expect that sturdiness from the folded phone and massive spine, but what about when the phone is opened and folded backwards? Even though this Fold 3 is thinner than last year's Fold 2, we still have no catastrophic damage while bending from the back. There was a slight complaint, which made me nervous, but still no damage to the screen, even after attempting the bend again. The Galaxy Fold 3, surprisingly, survives my durability test. The soft inner display not be the 80% harder surface that we were looking for, but the phone as a whole is for sure 80% stronger than it appears on paper. Nice work, Samsung. It'll be interesting to get inside and see that oleophobic motherboard during the teardown. Speaking of which, if you want a sneak peek, there's always my teardown skin from dbrand showing off the inside of the phone from the outside without ever needing to take it apart. Doesn't get much cooler than that. I'll leave a link down in the description so you can grab a teardown skin for your own phone. And let me know down in the comments, at what price point, if any, would you buy a folding phone? I'm curious. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. So this was Samsung Galaxy testing. It's good, it's लेकिन फोल्ड काफी ठीक भी है आप पहले चलते थे इस तरह के मोबाइल फोल्ड वाले फिर से फोल्ड वाले आ गए वो भी टच में आए अब तो सही है चल जाएंगे आज के लिए यही था थैंक्स बाय